What's the difference between a neck sprain and a neck strain? Find out next on the 50 Shades of Pain Show. Hi, welcome to the 50 Shades of Pain Show, where we empower our community with knowledge about pain, both physical and emotional, to give you the tools that you need for better health. Hi, I'm Dr. Donish, the Medical Director of Wellward Medical here in Lexington, Kentucky. I'm here with my co-host, Dr. James Escaloni, physical therapist and uh, movement specialist extraordinaire, I believe you call it. That's what I'll go with. <laughs> so today we're talking sprains versus strains when it comes to the neck. I know this is a very common, even among physicians, what's the difference between a sprain and a strain? Well, I know for myself, if I'm just saying this out loud, I often confuse the two just because I'm just in the heat of the moment and it's a single letter difference. That's a big letter difference, isn't it, and what it means. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. In the grand scheme of things, the P, the sprain, has to do with ligaments. And if it's a T, that is the strain, that's the tendons, or that's the, where the muscle attaches to the bone. And whether or not there's a sprain or a strain can make a huge difference in how you feel, and especially the type of treatments that we would use to help you out long-term. So let's talk about strains first. What's some stuff you can give about strains? Well, when you talk about necks, you can really break it into four or five main structures that can be the cause of pain. One is the bone, the joints, the arthritis. Next is the disc and the soft tissue, like the cartilaginous tissue. Next would be the ligaments that support the joints and the bone. And then the fourth one would be tendons. And then nerves, I, I kind of categorize as separately. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about sprains and strains, we're really talking about two of the more basic structures of the spine which are your ligaments and your muscles and tendons. Ligaments you can think of as stagnant structural support. What I mean is like if you're not moving, it's a ligament that's holding your posture together in combination with some other things, but the main structure or the main support structure is the bones being held together with the ligaments. Now, if you're doing a movement and you're holding your neck, say for instance, in a downward position or you're looking left and right, those are muscles and tendons that are creating motion and stability, but they still require what we call the stagnant structures, like the ligaments, to be well-tuned up in order to create the movement and hold stability within that movement. Mm -hmm. In the joints around the neck, the ligaments, if you can imagine, almost like a big hammock that's very firm between two bones, that's really how it works. It holds the tissues together, stops it from moving too much. And usually above that, that's where the muscle attaches to the bone at the tendon. And so if we're looking from the outside in, usually the tendons get injured first before the ligament gets the, brunt, the brunt of the any sort of trauma or whiplash, something like that. And that feels a lot different when the tendon gets hurt first versus the ligament, much different. So when a patient has a strain, what's the usual presentation? People will have an intense period of pain that lasts maybe three or four days, something in that ballpark. People will describe it as like, oh, I've got a stiff neck, I can't really look anywhere. And it's because the, the muscle is smart enough to recognize when this tendon is injured. And if it is injured, the muscle will go into a contraction. So it prevents other fibers from breaking and opening up and, and for that strain to continue to evolve. So it's, that, it's a protective mechanism for your body to try to create some guard while the fibers settle into a, a, a slight scar that will eventually break down into healthy tendon fibers. Mm -hmm. So typically the course of a strain is something like three or four days of an intense gripping pain where you really can't, you have a hard time maneuvering. And then over the course of the next two to three weeks, that's gonna start settling out and normalizing and going back to your baseline. But just because it goes back to baseline doesn't mean you're cured. At that point, it's really critical to get exercises because that tendon is no longer held together with tightly wound tendon fibers. It's held together with a scar tissue that needs to eventually break down to become normal, healthy tendons. Otherwise, this just remains a recurrent repetitive injury. Yep, and long-term in those particular cases, if challenging exercise is not done and people are only stretching it, you're not creating enough of a stimulus for a new foundation to be built on top of there. The tendon and the muscle around it is armor for that joint. So after people start feeling better, it really is important for them to not just stretch to feel their neck, to 
feel better, but actually exercise it as challenging ones that can build up some of the neck muscles. So those tendons can become thicker and they can recover a lot more resiliently from that injury. Now a sprain feels very different. A lot of times we see patients come in after like a car accident or a, a trip and a fall and they say, well, you know, fortunately I didn't hurt anything. I'm, I'm doing fine, there's no pain. But then three, four months down the line, two, three years down the line, they come back and they say, well, I've started to get this neck pain. And that's often an indication of sprain in the ligaments of the spine. Something like whiplash, it, if it injures a tendon, it's very noticeable right up front. But if it doesn't injure a tendon or create a strain, and it's instead a sprain or ligament that's been damaged, ligaments are not as heavily innervated or do, they don't have as many nerves going to them as do tendons. However, when they're injured and they're into that chronic inflammatory state, nerves grow into that ligament and then it becomes painful or the ligament itself is creating that stagnant structural support. And if it's failing, then that means that other structures have to take up the stress. And if they're not built for that kind of a load, then they're gonna start breaking down and causing other pain issues. So if you ever have swung in a hammock for a little too long and maybe you didn't tie it too tight on one end, you know how it just kinda, kinda gives a little bit, sags a little bit on the one side? That's what starts to happen a little more long-term. Yeah. It's a good analogy. Yeah, thank you. All right, so what can possibly be done for these people because exercise can't help a ligament, can it? Exercise can help, but it's more of using compensation rather than fixing the laxity of that hammock that's starting to grow. So there are types of injections that we do targeting very specifically at the ligaments that can help tighten those up and create that, recreate that stagnant stability, but it still needs exercises for your body to retrain and get alignment of all those fibers. So. It's really a combination of injections and exercise that helps to build up ligaments, whereas a strain from a tendon does reasonably well with exercises alone. And there are only niche situations or rare, or I wouldn't say rare, less common, maybe a third of the time as opposed to two thirds of the time, you'll need some additional intervention or treatments or injections and different types of procedures that can help with a strain that has had a hard time healing. Now the hard part for any of you guys listening at home is this takes a little while. One of the phrases that you say often is this, uh, the cells heal at the rate that hair grows. Right. And so, especially for a guy like me, that's a long time waiting. But if you think about how long you take from the day you got injured to the time frame for the cells to be really mature, a lot of times it's 12 weeks for things to get really stout and a full year for it to look really much like other tissues under a microscope. So give yourself some time after things have healed continue exercising, continue straining it just enough so the tissue is becoming more and more resilient. Check out our Facebook posts and our YouTube posts because we give a lot of good information like this, hopefully like this. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we would love to hear from you and get your comments on what needs greater clarification or what kind of questions you have that you would like us to answer online. And you can always check us out on our webpage, wellwardmed.com, where you can get an appointment or just get more information about the different kinds of treatments that we can provide. And please listen to our podcasts. We're on right. iHeartRadio, we're on Spotify, we're on Apple, all those things. You can check it out for the Wellward Way Show. And it's pretty amazing. <laughs> Well, for all of us here at Wellward, I'm Dr. Donish. I'm Dr. Escaloni. We'll see you next time.